I'm currently a sophomore in college, and the bar scene here is pretty big. Going out for the night to get special deals on alcohol so you can get plastered with your friends is kind of the go-to here. Despite this, I'm actually not a huge drinker and I don't enjoy it a lot because it tastes bad and makes my stomach hurt. I do enjoy the company though and I often go out just to be with my friends or meet new people. A lot of times I'm called the dad of the group because I end up taking care of them all the time. That's the prelude to what happened when I decided to go with him one Friday night. So we got all dressed up, pre-gaming a bit at my friend Q's apartment before we Ubered downtown to one of our pretty well-known college bars. After we got in, my friends immediately split off into tiny groups, coming over the club for girls they wanted to try their shot at spending the night with. This is going to make me sound weird, but one night stands aren't really my thing, and I don't want to end up cockblocking my friends, so instead of looking for girls, I usually find someone at the bar and make friends with them. I was chatting with some dude that was wearing a cowboy hat when eventually a girl approached me. She was pretty cute, probably 5'6 with 30 blonde hair and eyes that I think were light brown. They were so light, they almost looked gold, which threw me off a bit. She asked if she could buy me some drinks in exchange for being her friend for the night, and I of course accepted. Because hey, that's what I came here for anyway, right? Anyway, she kept her word, and we started talking to each other, and she introduced herself as Lexi, but to call her Alex. I asked her some basic stuff about if she came with friends, and if she went to college here, etc. To which all the answers were no. That struck me as odd as it's honestly pretty unsafe to be in the downtown area alone as a girl at like 1am in the morning. She said she wanted to hear about me though and actually seemed pretty excited to listen. It felt like a really nice change of pace because I'm usually the one learning about other people, not the other way around. It also could have been the alcohol starting to take effect since I'm actually a pretty big lightweight. As like I said, I don't actually binge drink often. The whole time I was talking, she stared into my eyes and had this warm smile that made me feel acknowledged if that makes sense. I felt like she was enjoying her time as much as I was, and that just made me even happier because I thought it meant I made a new friend. That was when her demeanor began to change though. She started to get kind of flirty and eventually asked if I wanted to go home with her. Like I said, I'm not really a one night stand guy, and I explained I like to get to know people a little better before sleeping together. I'm pretty sure I saw what I think was anger flash across her face, but it was quickly replaced with another smile and she suggested just going home and watching a movie instead. I agreed and pulled out my phone to begin ordering an Uber, but she basically grabbed my wrist and started guiding me outside. I was confused, trying to ask if she was planning to drive after drinking, but she wouldn't really answer me. We eventually got outside the club and she pointed to a black Honda Civic parked right at the front of the club. That was when all the warning bells rang like a tornado and passed through them. I was pretty drunk at this point in the night, maybe six or seven drinks deep, but I was still aware enough to see the red flags. She said she had came alone, but the lane the car was parked in was only four pickups, and I never saw her order an Uber. Somebody would have had to be driving the car. This was enough to make me uncomfortable, and I asked again if she was planning to drive the car. She said yes, as she continued walking me closer to it. I knew that was a bald-faced lie, and as we got closer, my heart sank, as I noticed the outline of three other guys in the car. At that point, my adrenaline kicked in, and I yanked my hand away from her, said there's no way in hell I'm getting in that car with her. She tried begging me one more time, saying she really wanted to have sex and would let me do whatever I wanted, but I had already turned around to walk back to the club. She started cussing me out, practically screaming at the top of her lungs as I walked back up to the bouncers to go in. I texted my friends what happened and we all met back up and went home. It was obvious she was going to college bars, trying to get guys drunk before offering to sleep with them, so she could get them in that car with three other men to rob them or do god knows what else. I called my city's anonymous tip line and left a detailed description of the girl, car, and place where it happened. That night was a real wake up call for me and I'm so thankful that despite being drunk that night, I was able to piece together what was happening before it was too late. Please remember to always be safe when going out with friends, especially when it's late at night or if alcohol is involved. At the time, I was 16 female and I was attending my first college quarter. Everything was going smoothly and I was making plenty of friends, until about halfway through the semester. One of my classmates, 26 male, came up to me and asked to exchange numbers and potentially go out on a date. I tried to make myself clear that I didn't want to go out with him simply because he was a lot older than me and I wasn't interested. 
I kindly let him down, but he insisted that he gave me his number. I continued to tell him no, and he took my phone out of my hand and made himself a contact. That startled me, but it only got worse. The next day in class, we had our regular 10 minute break and I was chatting with my friends when he came up to me mid-conversation, asking me to go talk. I firmly told him, no, I am in the middle of a conversation. He basically gave me the finger and acted like I was the worst person in the world. He stormed down the hallway and kicked open the doors. I went back into the classroom to at least be with my professor if anything more happened. My friend texted me asking what I said to him because he was outside kicking around a trash can and basically screaming at everyone who walked by him. At this point, I was scared to even leave the classroom because I didn't know what he was going to do. I had a previous stalker at the beginning of the semester and I had been in contact with the school about that, so I expressed how my classmate was making me uncomfortable at my weekly counseling sessions. The school was aware. He ended up leaving me alone for about a week or two. Then one day, there was a note on my desk asking if I loved him and if I wanted to marry him and to have kids with him. He wasn't in the classroom when I saw it, so I just slipped it into my backpack and ignored it for the rest of the lecture. I gave the note to my counselor so she could see that he may be a real issue. I believe she contacted my professor to make sure I was safe in class. After the note, we only had about a week left, so jumping to the very last day. It was an independent study day and we were on our own. He came into the class and somehow got himself kicked out, so he ended up leaving. I felt so relieved because I knew that was the last time I would ever see him. At this point, I knew that I needed to get my stuff done quickly and to make a mad dash to my car. I was about one lecture from finishing when he walks in the door and sits down at his desk. I knew that I needed to just log off my computer and finish it later. So I gathered all my things and thanked the professor. I was speed walking to my car when I had that gut feeling that someone was staring at me. I had to turn around and make sure that it wasn't him. Unfortunately, it was him and he was full on running at me. My first reaction was to call my mom for help. Just as our call connected, he grabbed my arm and pulled me to a stop. At this moment, I'm telling him to leave me alone as loud as I can, that I'm only 16. He said word for word, age doesn't matter, I know we are in love. I ran to my car as fast as I could to get away from him, but he stayed on me. Thankfully, my car only unlocked the driver's side door because he tried to get in. From this day on, I've watched my surroundings and I make sure nobody is following me or watching me. This happened when I was in college. I lived in East La Vista, a student community at UCSB, notorious for being a party school. It fully lived up to its reputation. I liked to party, but holy shit, these people were off the wall. As such, there were a lot of people who put themselves in dangerous situations, drinking to excess, not being careful, not locking doors, etc. It had a very isolated, insular vibe, and anyone who was hanging around who wasn't college aged immediately looked out of place and strange. One night after having a few drinks, I came home to my small house where I lived with two other girls, probably around 2.30 a.m. We were all serious students. I was probably the least serious, actually, and when we partied, it was not your typical UCSB mega rager, more like a small get-together with friends. We would often have a few people spend the night, sleep on our furniture or in our beds as the case may be. That night, my roommates had a few people over who I didn't know, and I saw when I returned home that one of them had opted to sleep on the couch. From the shadow that I saw there, I didn't turn on the light so I wouldn't wake anyone up. But as I was passing the couch to enter my bedroom, I noticed that the figure was lying very stiff. He just had this weird energy to him. He was lying down, but it was like he was putting all of his energy into lying as still and rigid as possible. I paused, and the guy quickly jerked his head to face me without moving his limbs so quickly that it startled me. I could see his wide open eyes glinting in the dark. Figuring that I'd startled him or that he was drunk or maybe on some kind of stimulant and unable to sleep, I just hurried past into my bedroom and locked the door. The dude made me nervous and I wasn't taking any chances. I fell asleep. At 4.30 a.m. I woke up. There was a strange sound at the door, almost like somebody was drumming their fingers against the wood very quietly. I lay still and listened. There were more quiet sounds, like someone scratching the door with her fingers, which got louder and louder until it was clear that he was using both hands and scratching as fast and as hard as possible. It created an extremely loud and intimidating sound that filled me with fear. I got my cell phone and texted my roommate because I was afraid to make a sound. Your friend is freaking me out, 
Is he coked out? Can you talk to him? He's banging and scratching on my door. She didn't text me back, probably because she was asleep. I texted my other roommate to the same effect, covering all my bases. Keep in mind that the scratching had been going on at this point for a couple of minutes. I have no idea how he could have sustained it. Scratching a wooden door with your fingernails can't feel good. He also grabbed at the doorknob and jiggled it super forcefully. Because neither of them answered, I decided to call and really wake them up. Though I was scared to make a sound, I know it sounds stupid, but there was something seriously horrifying about being teased like this through the door. I knew that he was really trying to terrify me. I felt like a little kid, but I could tell this guy was fucked up or something and made the police need to be called. And I wanted to loop my roommates in since it was one of their friends. The scratching stopped abruptly and I called my roommate, who answered sleepily. Yo, your friend is messed up. Can you please deal with it? Do we need to call the cops? He's seriously scaring me and he was scratching at my bedroom door. Really fucking weird. She didn't say anything for several seconds and when she did speak, her voice had no sleepiness in it at all. What friend? She said. That fucking guy that was sleeping on the couch, I said. She was quiet again. We didn't have any guys over, she said. Call the police. My adrenaline surged, and I told her to please lock the bedroom door as quickly as possible. I realized that I hadn't heard scratching in a while, and I had no clue where the dude had gone. Suddenly, I heard a loud banging in the other end of the house, where my roommates Lauren and Monica shared a bedroom. The bangs were followed by the sound of them screaming in fear. I quickly dialed the police as this maniac proceeded to bang against the luckily locked bedroom door of my two roommates as they screamed. The heaviness of the blows left no doubt that he was trying to break down the door. I told the 911 operator the situation and she dispatched two squad cars. The police in East Vista are generally used to peeling drunks off the sidewalks and breaking up brawling frat bros. This was really serious and strange and I think the dispatcher got the sense from my tone how terrified I was and she stayed on the phone with me. At one point, the banging stopped and everything was quiet for a while. I talked with the dispatcher and suddenly looked down to see that this guy had slipped his fingers through the one inch gap between my door and the floor and was kind of just waggling them around, making this weird growling sound. I screamed and backed away, which is my biggest regret about the situation, since when I look back, it would have been so awesome to just stomp the shit out of those fingers and hear the guy howl in pain. When the cops rolled up, I heard running and the sound of our sliding glass door opening and closing, and then he was gone. The cops never caught him. He had broken in through our side door by jimmying the lock somehow. My door was covered in what turned out to be the huge gauges he'd made using a pair of scissors, which he discarded on the ground before he left. What terrifies me most about this was that I walked right past him. I looked him right in the face. I realized now that he was not trying to sleep or on drugs was lying so stiff like that because he was hiding. He probably heard me open the door and freaked out because he hadn't realized there was another girl living there. He tried to blend into the couch in the darkness. The first time I went to college, I was promptly put in a class on philosophy with a teacher who really enjoyed pushing the religious buttons of my classmates. I detested it because I was 17 going on 18 and raised Christian but went to Catholic school. I bonded with another girl who was about 18 and an older student who was 29. It was my first semester. It was a good time. He, a few other classmates and I would sit in the grass after class and do homework and talk about all the things 18 year olds think is deep. I suppose in hindsight, I should have realized that there's no real reason a man pushing 30 found me interesting but I thought I was enigmatic and exciting. AKA, I was an idiot. About half the semester went by and he informed me it was his birthday weekend and that he wanted me and the other girl in our class to celebrate with him. I hadn't done much partying because dirty college basements didn't appeal to me. I thought it'd be nice to chill and share a drink with my religious trio. We all agreed to meet him at the halfway point between the school and his house and we'd walk the rest of the way there. About an hour before the party, I called him to just check in. He seemed in high spirits and happy to see I was still coming. However, something seemed off. He sounded weird and I could hear other male voices in the background. It sounded like a lot of guys were over at his house. I asked him and he said, Oh, just some of my boys hanging out. Which really sort of bothered me since this wasn't supposed to be a party necessarily. Just our usual trio hanging out. At that second, I decided not to go. I told him I wasn't feeling well and that I had to bail. Then I texted the other girl and told her I wasn't going that there were a bunch of guys at his house and to please be careful. 
I actually never saw or heard from her again after this. She dropped out of school almost immediately and the older guy disappeared too. I'm sure you've guessed by now, but this guy and his friends were definite predators. Not just a run-of-the-mill college douche bros, but they were responsible for a rash of sexual assaults, both on and off our college campus, that were going on for over a year. They'd been grooming freshman girls, some not even 18 yet. He spent two months slowly gaining our trust, purely to invite me over to a house full of men. The silver lining is that nearly all of them were arrested after girls on our campus spoke up. My creeper got arrested in another state on an outstanding warrant, but it definitely chills me to the bones to think that I was legitimately one naive decision away from my entire life changing for the worse.